Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Today, we are going to talk about design of steel components and specifically about beams. Let's go ahead and start. The white flange W21 by 57 steel beam shown in the figure below has its compression flange laterally braced at the one third point over its full length. Assume Fy equals to 50 KSI and Cb equals to 1 for the critical segment. The maximum factor load, Wu, in Kips per linear foot that the beam can carry for this length is most nearly. So this is one of those problems that you are going to have on the exam for sure or something similar. So what we have here is a white flange beam, 21 by 57, and the full length is 30 feet. We are shown here that the beam is laterally supported. What that means is that the unbraced length LB equals to 10. So I'm going to write this down, LB equals to 10 feet. Now, another thing I want to do is I'm going to go here in the FE handbook and you can type design of steel component okay and it's going to get you to the desired page which is under the civil engineering and of course if you're familiar with the fe handbook you can just scroll to it but doing a search is always helpful because it saves time so this is the page with the design of steel components and directly to beams so what I was talking about, the LB, LB is the unbraced length of the beam, and LP is the limit state of lateral torsional buckling. In our case, what you have to do is you have to know about LP and LR, and you have to know that if LB, the unbraced length, is less or equal to LP, then the limit state of lateral torsional buckling does not apply, meaning you don't have to do all this. But if your unbraced length is in between LP and LR, then lateral torsional buckling that's, does apply. So you have to go ahead and apply this formula over here. So this is what we're going to check next. We're going to go and see what is LP and LR. Well, our wide flange beam is 21 by 57. And FE Handbook provides you with the table where you can find all this information. So 21 by 57 is right here. I scrolled a few pages down. And this table is going to help us find the LP value, which is 477 feet, and LR value, which is 14.3 feet. So let's write this down in our example over here. I have LP as 477, LR 14.3 feet. And then if you check and verify LB is 10 feet, and if you compare LP is 477, LR is 14.3. So that means that our unbraced length is in between LP and LR. So that means we have to apply the formula. We, where is it? It's right right here. We have to apply this formula to find out MN. Great. So let's go ahead and do that. Now I have this formula here, MN equals to CB multiplied by MP minus MP minus 0 0.7 and so on, so on. That's not important. What I want to talk about is this CB. Where is this coming from? Um, if you look here, there's this uh, formula for CB in here, you are given in the problem that CB equals to one. And that is from, if you look at this table, in our case, we have a uniformly loaded beam and we have three, I mean, supported or two lateral uh, braces. So this is our case, correct? And CB in here, it's 1.01. .01. They told us it's one in our case. So we're just going to go with that. But just so you know, CB, if you ever need it on the exam, this is the table you can get your uh, value for CB. So next, CB is one. Okay. And 
let's see how can uh, we apply this uh, formula and find out MN. I'm going to come back here to the FE handbook. And because there's a lot of things here, FY, SX, you know, that we, we don't know. So I'm going to go scroll down to the table where I got my values for for W2157 beam. And I want to show you there are some formulas here right underneath the table, and which is MRX equals to 0 0.7 FY multiplied by SX, and then BF equals to this fraction over here. And all of these values is something that are part of our formula here. Okay, so I'm going to bring those two equations here. And I'm going to just, let me draw here. So see this value, 0 0.7 FYSX, this equals to, say equals to MRX, correct? It's kind of a, anyway, and then BF equals to MPX minus MRX over, okay, so this is MP, which is MPX, I know it's minus MRX over LR minus LP. So now this might look a little bit funky, but believe me, it's not. Once you get the hang of it, this is actually. So now if I do this, right, this term, MPX minus MRX over LR minus LP, you're following here, this equals to BF. So the reason I'm pointing this out is because I'm going to rewrite this equation, substituting that. So next, and I'm adding the phi because we, you know, remember the equation phi mn has to be greater and equal than mu. So I need phi mn. So follow me phi, I'm adding phi here which means I'm going to have to add it on this side as well, which I'm doing. So phi, CB is one, so we're going to get rid of that, multiplied by, and now I have MP minus, right? I have this MP minus BF. Remember, we said that this term over here is all BF multiplied by LB minus LP. So do you see how this big equation simplified very quickly to only this perfect so now i think we have everything we need we have lp we have lb now bf i haven't brought it here but bf is given here in the fe handbook see phi bf and we have mrx we have mpx mpx is 484 keep foot mrx is 291 so Every single thing is given to us. We just have to know where to find it. And then, oh, I don't know why it does that. BF is 20.1. So I'm going to write these things down. I have phi MP, 484 keep foot, phi BF, 20.1 keeps. And then it was MR. Well, MR, we didn't need it because it was part of this formula. So now I'm going to continue in this equation and substitute everything that I know. And I'm going to get 484 minus BF, which is 20.1, multiplied by LB 10 minus LP 4.77. And if you do the calculations, you're going to get this value over here, 378.877 keep foot. So now what we know is that phi MN has to be greater or equal than MU. We have phi MN we have to calculate MU. MU for a simply supported beam is equal to PL squared over eight. So this is the formula for MU. And from this formula, we are going to calculate for WU, which is the uniform load and keeps per foot that our beam can carry. And this is going to be, of course, 8 multiplied by mu divided by L squared. And if you do the calculations, this is 8. And why am I? Because from here, from this equation, 
see how phi phi mp it has to be greater or equal to mu. So we're, we're going to set phi mp equal to mu. So now we can substitute in our equation here. So from here, you go step by step, divide by L squared. So divided by 30 squared. And you get that WU equals to 3.368 kips per linear foot. So this, after all of that, you know, formula applying, you get 3.368. And looking at the answers, we are getting the correct answer as B, 3.36. This is the closest one. In solving this problem, there are actually two ways of doing it. There is the long way, which I, I just showed you, and there is the, the shorter way, the fastest way, right? And this is the, the way you want to... Uh, do it on the exam. You actually want to save time and be able to solve this as quickly as possible. So now I showed you the, the longer way so that you know how it's done and sort of to understand where each component is, is coming from. But now I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do it, the same problem, faster by using the table in the FE handbook. I'm going to start from the beginning and just say that in the problem, you're just told that this beam is laterally supported in two places, which means that your unbraced length is 10 feet. That being said, our beam is W21 by 57. So, and you have this value of 10 feet. You go in the FE handbook and you're going to go to this table, which is going to give you the available moment, the phi mn, which we have calculated, right? It took us a little bit of time. Not too much, but the, again, I'm, I'm just going to emphasize how important it is on the exam just to be fast and be able to find your answer faster. And then this is your embraced length, okay? Well, in our case, our LB embraced length is 10 feet. So how are we going to read this? Also, you have to be careful that all these values also match, right? We are told in the problem that FY is 50 KSI, SCB is one. So that means we can apply this you know, table. If you are given different values, obviously you can't use this table. But I'm sure on the exam, they're gonna give you a beam that you can find in this table. So let's go ahead and do this again. The unbraced length is 10 feet and we're going to go and find our beam, which is, the beam was 21 by 57. 21 by 57 is right here, this dashed line all the way down. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw a straight line, as straight as I can, all the way up until I intersect with my beam, 51, 21 by 57, and I think that point is right here. I think it's right, right here. I'm just going to say it's right there. So now when, when I intersect with the beam, I'm going to go left. And this is where I'm at. And this is the phi mn, available moment. So this is the line for 375, this is 390. We have 15 units in between, and we have one, two, three, four, five squares. 15 divided by five, that means that each square is equal to five units. So this point right here, 375 plus three, it's gonna give me a phi MN of 378 foot keeps. And just like that, just like that, we found that our phi mn equals to 378 foot keep. There you go. And now we wrote that down. Now we can quickly, skipping all the calculations, go and do the same thing we did before, calculating mu from simply supported beam. This is PL squared over eight. In our case, WU, L squared over eight. And you just do this calculation quickly and use 378. For some reason, I have left the moment that I got from, you know, before.
But if you just use 378, you're going to get a value from probably closer to what they have over here. You're going to get something very similar to what I got here. Okay. And this is how you solve this problem using the shortest method, using the fastest method. I hope that this was helpful. I hope that you are able to understand the a few things that I wanted to point out today. I wanted to expose you to a few tables that you have in the EFI handbook. This one, and then we also used uh, this one over here with all of the values that are helping you to calculate the design flexural strength very quickly. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please, subscribe and give a, a like because this helps put this video in front of more people like you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Keep practicing effie problems and I will see you next week.